coming back a little bit early as the game has already started. And to best of five, ZB, blah, 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 ZVP. The bottom right, as the purple Zerg, it is dark. And the top left is the red Protoss. It's Trap. This is like the first Protoss we've seen today. <laughs> Hello. Hope you're all enjoying some StarCraft this Monday morning. I'd do that thing where we all groan and complain about Monday mornings, am I right, guys? Mondays. Well, except in esports, there's no concept of time and days, because, you know, what could be the start of the work week for one person is the last day of the work week for someone else who has Tuesdays off. Plenty of people do that. It's weird, man. It's weird. Freelance stuff, am I right? Bunch of weirdos. Anyways. Only bringing up nonsense, because we don't see much going on here, but this is where I could talk about the players. You know, Dark, we saw him beat TY rather <laughs> almost easily. 2-0 against TY's mech. Looking strong in that matchup. What about ZVP, though? On Trap, Gemini's not around. You know, if he was, maybe I would let him gush over him. But Trap obviously has gotten this far. And, uh. Oh, well, did he, did, did he, did he see, get seated in? I feel like he got seated in. Uh, no. Okay, so he's, he's <laughs> one of the few Protosses who didn't. There's four Protosses got seated in. Alright, so he qualified through Wednesday's qualifier as well to even get here. So obviously he's playing pretty well. And in fact, some of those series, I think he was playing really damn well. So I, I've got hopes for both players. Personally, I guess I'd, I, I'd, I'd want to see Dark. Dark's a very fun player to watch. In certain days, he's, he's one of the cheesiest players. Other days, he's one of the most macro-oriented. But Trap, at certain points in time, has been my favorite Protoss. Not anytime recently, unfortunately. Hasn't had those those peaks like he had years and years ago, but still, it can all, it'll also be really fun, fun Protoss. I'm gonna watch this first game unfold, and then I'll say who I, I wanna win. But these EVPs, some of them have been going on for very long. Like, the first CVP, in the first round, rather, um, apparently one of the, the longest ones, why we were waiting for Dark for so long to face TY it was that he was facing Hero, and that was a rather long series. It seems like a decent amount of ZVPs get to the mid game right, not a whole lot of two base all ins that end the game really, really soon. And then when they get to the mid game, there seems to be kind of like, I mean, right, the Protoss player survives the mid game and then they push, and the Zerg player says, well, I have enough Lurker or something like that. They seem to go a little longer, in my experience, than the other matchups, especially when you have two axes uh, every which way, right? But we'll see. Trap's going for a Stargate opener, which we just saw the Oracle fly above. Uh, there we go. Our heads being the camera. Adepts decide not to shade in. There's a Spore Crawler ready to go to third base, which is something that a lot of Zerg players skip, right? They have Queens to protect the, the third base, and that's one more drone they don't have to commit. But it's not the third base Spore that's skipped. It is the natural base Spore, which in some ways makes more sense, right? While your third base is... In you can actually just not build a score at all because there's not a lot of drones there for some time. You're droning the natural, right? Um, the natural is where they're less likely to be able to enter into without repercussions. You know, they're, they, they're diving in on top of a lot of creep spread with queens chasing them as they watch them. So sometimes it makes more sense to have that third, second score call at the third. It's a really weird thing to say. But enough about the Spore Crawlers, which are doing a great job in their positioning, deflecting two Oracles. Um, these things have not done anything yet. They're actually banking quite a bit of energy. We have more important things to talk about. We do have a lot of gateways on the way, charge and a Templar Archives. And while Trap doesn't tend to take a third base, I do wonder when he in intends to attack. I mean, this is all coming down rather quickly. Um, certainly, we have much faster third bases from Protoss players and in other builds, right? And there could be an attack of Archons with the Warp Prism. Uh, yeah, there it is. Or, or, and, slash, and, or, whatever. 
with charge lots. Like, the charge isn't going to be absolutely perfectly timed, but neither are the Archons already in the War Prism or anything like that. In fact, they're being made back at home. And with Dark tailing the War Prism, it's going to be something that's delayed anyways, because you don't want to warp in on top of Lings. Overseer is going to see the gateways are already here. You know, the third base was kind of being kept uh, tabs on anyways, exactly when that's coming down. There is... Uh, it should be a worry for Dark that there could be a lot of charge lots on the way, and now the War Prism is ready to also warp in a lot of charge lots along with these Archons. So we should be getting Roaches and Hydras. But Dark already had 66 drones, and it's not the worst thing in the world to now start building up his army. Why does this Overseer look so small? That's a very small cocoon. Is that just me? Am I freaking out here? Am I wigging out? Okay, whatever. Oracles, I was talking about dark scouting. Trap's also been doing some scouting finally with the Oracles testing Revelation. Not quite seeing the lair timing, but seeing the Hydra Den and it's moving and grooving. Knowing the fourth base is around here as well. Those Chargers are being warped in, but there is quite a large Zerg army, just not in the proper location. He was wondering where that Warprism was, lost track of it, and unfortunately has to cancel that fourth, so nice little attack there. You can lift up the Archons, send those Zealots away, and that is a nice snipe. Meanwhile, Trap goes up to that uh, pro production at the third base, right? Getting saturated there. Gases will be coming down eventually. He's getting into Storm, and finally that plus one. Recall on the Zealot to try and save their lives. So we'll save two of them? Oh, he saw he saved three of them. Whoa, man, whoa. Double pumped Immortals is going to be really good against those Roaches he saw, but there are a lot more Hydras on the way. Now we have a Spire as well, so will Trap be able to scout that? He still has two Oracles alive, but it's not that he hasn't been, like, using them. He's been using them. We've seen them flying every which way. It's just that he hasn't had many opportunities to abuse them, I guess is the better way to put it. So we'll see if he gets Revelation of the Natural. Looks like he's going to have more Stasis Ward. No, he's actually using the Pulsar Beam. Okay, that's weird. But this is far more important over here. We have some Force Fields. We have the Immortals pop out. The Warpers can provide some type of Micro, but there are Hydras, which their range, I believe. So that's going to have to be very, very, very careful there. Shield Batteries were done, and that, they're providing a lot to the Archons specifically. But the Archons get popped off. The Immortals have lost their shields, and I think this attack which might be too good. Trap might have gotten a fourth base cancel, but he didn't really stall out Dark's economy that much. And that is it. GG. Dark, with a very powerful push at the end of the push, even had like 40 more army supply, so it made it look easy. Perhaps Trap, if he had been faster to that storm, could have made a huge difference, but we didn't see any storms. So I think it was done, but didn't have any I Templars was the problem. And maybe he was meaning to make High Templars at third base, but that's when the army was suddenly there. Which he had lost track of because his oracles got cornered. His oracle usage, as I said, like it wasn't that he wasn't clicking them on them, like he almost forgot them. It wasn't that. It just they just they roamed around the main and natural and they got stuck in a corner, which is not great. The War Prism could have done a better job keeping track of the army, too, in a, in a weird way, right? Like, attacking can be scouting, but that's not really reliable, and obviously didn't keep track of the entire army. So Dark takes a rather quick game number one. Trillion Fall is going to be Amber 2. Trap, perhaps. Not finding the timing he would have wanted with the Archons. I mean, a fourth base cancel is, is cool, right? But it was still a lot of drones that Dark was able to make before he had to make his army. And that does get scary. But, you know, whether it was that or just the not having storms, which seems a little bit more of the culprit either way. Trap made some mistakes for Dark. Seemed to not make too many. Maybe Trap has a different plan in mind. This is the qualifying match. So it's a best of five. But it is not the only qualifying match. If Trap were to lose this, he can go into the lower bracket, which he already has a head start in. Right? Just for getting this far. Never bracket. And he'll be... 
two matches away from qualifying. He'll be one match away from the qualifying match. I, I never know which one's the best way to say it. But yeah, so. There's still hope for all you Trout fans if he does fall here. We have something interesting going on. In the bottom left is the purple Zerg. It is dark. The top right as the blue Protoss. It's Trap. But what is what is that little dot going across the map? Oh, it's a drone. Now, who in the world drone scouts? Not many people. A drone does win that fight. But just barely. Dark is banking a lot of cash. He did send a drone to the natural, his own natural, that is, to go for a hatchery, but it was blocked by Trap's probe. So he has to go for the third base. And if his plan was to do a cheeky block hatchery move, Trap did a good job leaving his probe on the low ground to make sure that doesn't happen. Some other people would actually send that back up to the high grounds with a, a mineral in its mouth, for instance, and, and miss the opportunity to block a, a hatchery going down. But that is usually why you see a drone at this time in this matchup. Otherwise, there's no drone scouts ever done. It can also be used to stall out the gas geyser, which is a little annoying. I, you know, I'm not a Protoss player, so the timing of it exactly, I don't know what, what it messes up the most. But since you are going for a gateway nexus, then Cybernex Core, your natural gas isn't like, it's not the worst thing to take, you know? And you can even time it up rather well with a nexus, which is exactly what Trap does. So it's like, it's something to use the gas uh, to, go, to go drone for, but how much does it push off everything? I guess I could literally watch his gas and, and know for the future, I suppose. Oh, okay. So there had to have been a reason, there had to have been a, more of a, of a long con here for that drone than just getting the hatchery, right? Because even if he had gotten the hatchery, it still would have been like, well, was that really just all you wanted? Usually it's not, it's not a very popular strategy anymore just to go for the, the hatchery block and then say like, aha, I got you, and then go back home. So there is something more to this. So the gas guys are being blocked means that it looks like... Duh, duh, duh. So the Stargate came down at a pretty normal time because he went for an Adept first, which isn't a lot of gas, but the Warp Gate was delayed because he also went for a Stalker. Something along those lines, it looks like. But regardless of, of whatever is delayed by seconds or not, this build is just a little it's just a little funny in general. Even if Trap had a perfect game plan going on here and his, his second Gas Geyser was totally fine. Um, but... Roach Burrow? That's that's always going to be something you don't expect this early on, or at all, and it's always going to be a little bit dangerous to deal with because most Protosses open up with a Stargate, right? Unless they see something very suspicious, or they're going for one of those kind of weirder Robo kind of all aliens or or macro game, I suppose. They're going to go for a Stargate. Um, what 80% of the time? It's a good it's a good guess. And the Stargate, while it does give you some scouting potential, gives you detection. It's not reliable detection when you split things up. So one revelation might catch more than one roach. And hopefully it will. But it's also possible he just won't have detection as the roaches show themselves. Panic ensues and Trap's trap gonna throw down a shield battery to help out. But there's the burrow. Not only micro potential for the roaches, but also healing them extremely fast. The oracle out of juice here. Does not have revelation. Now he starts up a second oracle, but that means that there's no voider to help out potentially, which would kill these roaches the fastest of all the options. Phoenix would need at least two Phoenix to really be effective, right? Even though they could lift it and stop them from burrowing. It's just, it's a very difficult hold to make with the Stargate. It's possible, but it is difficult. We have a Krona going down on both of these, uh, the Stargate as well as the gateway, the warp gate, because now he has two gateways. They could help out, but he's dealing with two pronged her ass here in the main base looks like dark's not gonna get the micro down he's so focused in the natural but he is still focusing somewhere and he's still getting damage done so behind this dark goes back into drones he made a decent amount of roaches but he also has a third hatchery so he could probably make up the worker difference it's not the drone kills the probe kills sorry that he was looking for of that i'm almost certain but nine did go down this can really snowball. If you get the one pylon powering the Stargate, that could actually be game over literally right then and there. Didn't happen, so the game goes on. It's just about how long you deny mining. And denied mining is now what we, we should be talking about. The Dark's also up in drones again. Mm, Roach is finally cleaned up with the help of a third Oracle. It's kind of hard to micro against them. Pulsar Beam does damage so quickly. 
But we still have roaches every which way we look. Two in the mineral line, two in the middle of the natural and the main, two in the mineral line of the natural. Um, four actually, and then two still at the wall. Dark, kind of, you know, piece by piece he added on roach. And then also a big number of drones. So he, he split his attention for a second. That's why we still have so many roaches available, but he did go pretty much full back into droning. Now up to 45, just about. He's got spore crawlers on the way to make sure the oracles can't even up the odds here. Revelation finally reveals some of the roaches, but this has just gone on for too long. I'm not sure what the exact appropriate reaction to this is, but I know that one of them is to just fully wall off, because they can't do anything about that. They won't be able to micro in your probe line, even as much as they want to. And with a shield battery protecting the wall too, like it would take a long time for the roaches to tear it down. That's one of the best ways to do it. Um, Adding a robo as soon as you realize what's happening, like as soon as you can afford it, is also another way that we've seen it. But, yeah, this has gone on for way too long. Probe count not looking so hot anymore. Oh my good door. <laughs> oh, like uh, two minutes ago it was nine, now it's 27. The trap's been building probes during the process, but oh my god. This is just too much. Uh, Adept's trying to even things up here, but a couple of lings, no problem. Three oracles do take on a spore crawler if you immediately target fire it. Especially without a queen to help out, but... They go for the drones, and a really nice burrow move as, as Dark's like, Oh, wait a second, I have burrows quickly. So he loses 14 drones compared to the 28 of Trap, but there's still a couple roaches going for a 29th. Actually, one roach going for a 29th, and that is still going to be game in favor of Dark. As Trap taps out... On, I mean, there might have been a game to play out here, but Trap was about to be flooded with lings and roaches, so I think that's what he knew was going to kill him. But they had actually evened out on workers again, which is really, really silly. What a cheeky little build there. If the pylon dies, as I said, it's an easy GG. If the wall gets up for the Protoss, sometimes the Zerg player can look a little silly for trying to do it. It looks really strong in that circumstance, but it can backfire. And even in that circumstance, uh, you know, Trap did even up the workers again. Despite taking such severe losses, and there's a there's a game, maybe. Could be the last map, blue shift. Uh I forgot to put traps team thingy on. That's why the logo mod is there. So we made sure, we can make sure the barcodes don't have to have a name attached to them, but oh well. I now understand it, but it's not helping us right now. Trappy trap, trappy trap, dap, dap, dap. There. In the bottom left, up two to zero, it is the Purple Zerg, Dark. In the top right, as the Red Protoss, it is Trap. This is not an all-in. Look at the drone count. Ah! I mean, this would be a situation where I would go into my my bag of replays and then bring out a one which the Humming Claws build fails horribly. And go, no, it's 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 committed. There's a reason it's not the typical opener. It's not just harassment. 
I guess it's more along the lines of like, well, two racks is then an all in. Look at the macro. And I'll be like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. I guess. Yeah. Look at this. The drone did go across the map again. He goes for the hatchery block. I guess Trap's probe wasn't there, or maybe it wasn't paying attention. I'm not sure which one. I guess it's a larger natural as well, but it's very, very annoying. So you're going to have to kind of, quote unquote, waste money on a zealot. You're going to have to pull more probes. If you wanted to out DPS the building of the hatchery, it's more than four probes. Is it five probes? But yeah, there's four probes in a zealot. There we go. Or five probes. You did bring five probes. Okay. Point is, when a zealot appears, it basically takes care of it. That's still a decent number of probes pulled. Uh, Dark's going to have most of his drones back at home, right? So even though the worker count's technically in favor of trap, it's five probes less. He has to delay his nexus, get a zealot, get a separate X core, then get his nexus. Dark does not have to spend all 300 minerals on doing that either, right, with the cancel at 75, and still has his other hatcheries available. He still has minerals to get these. And what is still a pretty okay time, you know, all things considered. There is a bit of a fear of a, of a counter, you know, there's one thing that if you do scout, they have a third uh, hatchery, which the probe saw, that you know their speed probably isn't going to be that fast, their lings aren't going to be that plentiful, you could try and move across the map with an, a zealot and adept. A reaction to this when it was really popular to do the, the blocked hatchery thing was to go for two gateways and do a counter and it, you know, meta shift and all that, but with one zealot and one stalker, it wouldn't really do a whole lot. The drone's not going to find an opportunity to turn into an extractor, so it just does a little bit of scouting and dies. Dark does not go into Roach Burrow. Just the speed here and drones. So, Trap is forced to play a little off standard, but all of our players, space, I can say this somewhat confidently, like all of our players in StarCraft are pretty much veterans. There's, there's very few new Korean players for sure, and even amongst the Europeans and North Americans, there's not too many new players. But there are some, you know, they might have played in Heart of the Swarm, but they didn't play like seriously or something along those lines. So the Korean pro gamers, they've all played through all different metas. Uh, a few of them being, I suppose, from the Kespa era, where maybe they missed out in 2011, 2012, but still mostly cut up pretty quickly. Trap is one of those guys that's played from the very beginning. He's not a Kespa era um, player. He was ESF, I guess is what it was called. But he's been around, he's, he's played all the metas, and one of them was the proxy hatch meta, both the proxy hatch, where you would put a proxy hatch and then attack them with roaches and, and spine claws or whatever as well as just the block hatchery hot gotcha, which eventually came down to, well, you kind of annoyed the Protoss, but it really wasn't worth it. So that's why it fell out. For a time in, in Pro League, actually, I think Dark was rather well known for doing the hatchery in the main base, if I'm remembering correctly. Good Lord, look at the scouting that's going on for Dark. Okay, 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 okay. I mean, he saw it was a Stargate, but he is checking everywhere for pylons? A, a hidden gateway? Like, I'm not even sure. There's, there is a lot of lings going every which way. Now he's calmed down a little bit more, but he still has the Zelnagas. He still has uh, checks on a warp prism, or in this case, whatever flies away from the Stargate. The one thing he can't check with such scouting as this is, is it double Stargate? Or not? He's going to have to literally see how many Phoenix there are, and then he'll know. But by then, it also might be too late. Stalker and Phoenix combined, of course, take out the Overlord before he can see anything does not see the second Stargate and the trap is waiting to bulk things up. Dark gets on a spine crawler because he really is quite in the dark, right? So, you know, he hasn't seen an oracle try and go for harassment. So you, the questions do start to pop up in your mind what could possibly be going on. He hasn't seen any proxy pylons or anything further at the front of the base, like a robo kind of snuck off to the corner. So what is going through his mind right now? Apparently not so much that the potential of the double Stargate. We don't have like an extra spore car being put down or extra queens. Oh, never mind. We do have extra queens. So that might be why, and he also saw it with his own Naga. There we go. Okay, I think the timing lined up pretty well. So there's there's question marks for sure for Dark. He'll get to the 56 drones, but... Okay. Um, but still had to play a little, little cautious with so that spine crawler. Now building more spore crawlers and more queens. He just have to react to this many Phoenix rather strongly. 
The queens can only find them and, and shoot them away before they get to the drone line every so often. They can't be super reliable to do that. And he does decide to go for a spire option here, not the high list option. Decent amount of damage done by the Phoenix, who are all alive, though just barely. An option to deal with the Phoenix besides, you know, Sport Claws and Queens, obviously, is to also just, like, kind of drone through it. Fourth base can't be lifted, so if you can get the drone over there and start it, then they can't do anything about that. And then, you know, eventually you do grow your Queen count, your Hydra count, your Corruptor count, something like that, and, you know, you do get back your drone. So even though Dark temporarily dipped closer to what Trap has now at 50, he's back up to 68. Trap's gonna find whatever he can with the Phoenix, and he's also gonna find whatever army there is to find, and keep track of that. He's got his third Nexus on the way now, but it's really not that fast. It's, uh, not even halfway done quite yet. Ling's patrolling around, seeing if the army ever moves out, because, well, Corruptors are great for the Phoenix, they're not so great for a ground army, and even though this ground army is not upgraded or even that big, there really wouldn't be a lot on the ground to deal with it. So Dark's gonna keep tabs on that. Creep spread going uh, as strong as possible in this matchup, considering his queens are also dealing with the phoenix so often. It's really not that bad. Eleven corruptors are about to pop. Roach speed's finally on the way, as well as an evolution chamber with a little bit of synthesis. The spine crawl nicely done. Corruptor reveals itself. I do believe the spire was revealed from the phoenix roaming, roaming around. Oh, it wasn't? Really? Oh. Oh, okay. Well, that's maybe a little bit awkward then. But the Phoenix are still in high enough number that even if he sees Corruptors and he goes, oh shit, like is it also Mutas, he could he could start building Phoenix again. But it's not usually the Zerg's choice to go into Mutas against Phoenix, even if they start off with Corruptors. It's a very bold choice to make, very old school choice as well. So we are going back into Roaches and Hydras. And a lot of Roaches are bad. The Corruptors will take out the Phoenix um, pretty much for sure. If they go over a cannon or whatever, then they're not so much, but... It's not about the Phoenix anymore, it's about that ground army. He comes in, snipes the War Prism, sees the Archon is merging. It's a little bit scary, but he was already building a lot of roaches. He's got Transfuse as well, he's bringing forward every single structure he has on the fence. Really nicely done. I really love the score Crawlers too, in case the Corruptors couldn't find those Phoenix, or in case the War Prism got a little too bold if it wasn't already dead. So this ends up being a rather easy defense, and Trap falls behind. His Phoenix are no longer going to be able to do that damage, that continued damage they're kind of known for, as they've already been thinned out in number. And honestly, Dark didn't even lose that many uh, roaches. His army is still rather strong. The Hydra's Den was temporarily cancelled, it looks like. Yeah, so he's rebuilding that. Bit of, a, of an overreaction, but uh, an appropriate one, really, for what he thought it could have been as an attack. Canceling the Hydra's Den was a safer call. And now he has a ton of roaches. He finds another War Prism. Oh my god, he finds another War Prism. That was going to try and bring back Dark's army. Because I'm not sure that Trap's army is going to survive against it. Now, there's a shield battery at the Archon, so that, that's actually kind of scary. But we have some Ravagers here to cut through the force fields and also damage. There's going to be certainly a clumped up army. In fact, they do get a couple of Crucibiles on top of the army. The force fields are rather good. You know, it's a trade. You get the, you get the armored Crucibiles, you get the force fields with the Crucibiles. In that case, the force fields looked, up, looked pretty good at the end. But he doesn't have a lot of them. Trap a little gas starved. At least his third base lives, and with a lot of army remaining at that. Phoenix still roaming around as well, somehow dodging away from these Corruptors. These units probably won't even be that important to talk about, really, as the game goes on. I mean, as far as something to talk about, I guess, you know, it's something. But they're kind of meant to deal with each other. <laughs> uh, well, the Corruptors are meant to deal with the Phoenix, and the Phoenix are meant to do something to the drone line. They're not really going to have any open opportunities, so they're almost useless. Don't even quite catch the fifth base being made, although they were close to it. And I guess when an, uh, an engagement comes down, they could sacrifice themselves to lift a couple of important Ravagers. Which is always helpful. Thirteen Hydra's now on the way, finally with their upgrades as well, since the Hydra's down was a little late. Plus two is on the way, triple score call in the main to protect against anything that could happen. Uh, Crave spread looking quite, quite good. It's going to see this attack... About halfway across the map. Crafters could definitely pee in this building, which <laughs> Trap anticipates, so he cancels it. There's a single can over here. It's not a lot of Crafters, so that should do it. Trap can't really truly push without a War Prism, but his army is getting kind of scary. He survived 
despite that attack not looking so hot, he has survived to a decent army count here, almost at 100 army. So he can survive anything, I believe, defensively with some storms, and I think he could go for an attack as well. Dark might be the one that's in a little bit of trouble if he doesn't get his tech up, but he is the one attacking right now. He's gonna take care of the War Prism once again. No War Prisms for Trap this game, jeez. But is he gonna be able to tackle Archon, Immortal, and Storms? The Storms blanket in the army, but some good pullbacks from here. Concave is rather good for Dark as well, as he has plenty of room to maneuver, but he is getting destroyed. The Storms might have all been used. Now they're turning into Archons, but they did the job. They barely pushed through the Roaches and the Hydras, allowing the Immortals to get those last few shots, and the Archons now at four are looking kind of scary, but those Corruptors taking out the Warp Prism means that Dark just needs to buy some time for his reinforcements, and he might be able to clean this up. There are not that many Storms left over, and that is a really big contributor to a lot of the Protoss armies, right? So this could be a hold. We have a bit of a choke in benefiting Dark. Sometimes it can backfire, though, and as they go through it, ah, there we go, the Storm blankets it. So it's a, it's a literally, like, pulling and, and pushing through this choke. But the Hydra's then could also be target fire. That's another worry that I'll talk about in a second. Two more storms. Are the storms available? Oh my god, it's five seconds away. It's five seconds away, but the army's already being killed. The Immortals without their shields. The Archons not lasting as long as they would have liked, and the Immortals even need target fire, so no recall for them. This little tiny army over here finally has some storms, or one storm. It was literally one storm. Oh god, but it is going to be destroyed. No more recall. It's already used. One storm is going to damage... Kill a couple hydras, sure. But this not looking so hot. Eh, actually, there's more High Templar. At least Trap kept on building High Templar behind all the storms he's already used. But they're just always seconds away from having it. Again, five seconds here. Nexus goes down. War Prism goes down. High Templar is running away. They're going to have some storms. They're going to be on top of a choke. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Dark's economy, he's on five bases, 62 workers. Not the biggest work count we've ever seen, but certainly enough to reinforce this. In fact, he's having trouble with the injects now, it seems, as those queens did die in the, on the defense of the counter. Phoenix come forward to lift up a couple of last two units, and they're surprisingly helpful. <laughs> I did kind of just forget about them. Corruptors were given, gave their lives away diving for something, I guess. Everything's calmed down for a little while longer. Dark's on five bases. Trap only on three. And that might be what's the most important thing about this game. Phoenix once again trying their best, man. And they are, they are so good at dealing with Hydras. Kudos to the Phoenix control. Infestation pit now on the way along with plus one carapace, which would give Dark the upgrade lead since they both went for one flyer attack. Bit of a roach run by. Gonna look for a fourth base. They're gonna find it. They now know where Trap's gonna have to defend, but I don't know if they're gonna be able to cancel it. This is gonna be the fifth warp prism, I wanna say. And this one should survive, right? Right? There's no corruptors. The hydras won't be on top of it. Right? Yeah. Wow. As expected for his EVP, Dark has taken more resources lost, but that's, as I said, as expected. This evolution chamber would not be a bad thing to target next time Trap has some excess minerals and some zealots he doesn't need. That's, he kind of needs everything he, he's got, so I don't know if that'll ever happen. But the entire army goes to the fifth base, which Dark was not prepared for. Dark found the infestation pit, and I wonder what it was going to be for exactly. It's not for a hive, it's for 16 swarm hosts. That's where all of his minerals and gas went into. Zealots do go to the third base again, but they're not targeting the evolution chamber, so just drones go down. I mean, a decent number of drones, I want to say. But Dark can replace them. Still at 64 workers, after all. Plus one carapace is almost done, and now the swarm hosts can get to bullying Trap's army. Once Trap is stuck on his side of the map, it's really hard to break out against swarm hosts, especially in such high numbers. But Trap isn't stuck around 100 supplies at about 150. And if he could take a couple of decent engagements against a swarm host, maybe storms really start to blanket them. Maybe they get miscontrolled. He could go for a counter while the locusts are on cooldown. Speaking of storms, those are some good ones. Stop the mostly Hydra army. Traps is getting a little split up here, so he's gonna lose a couple of high gas units. At least gets that one last storm there. He can save the high templar. And the reason he was getting split up was that Dark was splitting him up, but a good split of units, kind of for both sides. Trap does end up falling in supply more so than Dark. I mean, heavily, <laughs> a lot, a lot more so. Considering that most of Dark's supplies in these swarm hosts, that does make sense. 
Chap has four bases mining. He is awfully desperate. This is his last chance to get through the winner's bracket. There is a lower bracket, which I think he's going to have to go for. Now, Storms cover the Locust, so the Nexus is not going to go down. This could be an opportunity to counter if Trap's army supply was a little bit stronger, if he wasn't being attacked on his third base as well. Warp Prism was used for the offensive, for the harassment, but it's not being paid attention to, as every single extra warping goes into the defense as well. It would have only been four Zealots, of which it looks like Dark was going to be prepared to deal with. And things, I mean, they're, they're stable-ish, four bases with the economy. I mean, that, that sounds stable, but it's it's it does not seem like a long-term stability. These are not... I mean, they're good investments, but they're gonna fail. The economy's gonna come crashing down, and all this... All these houses that the trap has built up here in Bod is gonna, they're gonna crash and burn. Immortals go down, worsening trap supplies. He dips below 100. Dark is just pulling them every which way. And while the Swarm Hosts are a huge portion of Dark Supply, not really constantly being actively used, right? Um, they are doing what they should. And the rest of the army, it seems, is, is more than enough. Trap not willing to tap out yet, though. Fourth base went down. Third base trying to get mined out. Can't replace much of his army at all. Not willing to tap out. 13 mutas might just be the kicker. Actually, no. Not even going to reveal themselves. Dark takes the game. And the series. GG. Dark looking very strong in this qualifier.